right. All right, we're going to officially roll into our media availabilities here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Um, we are now joined by Ross Chastain. Ross, thank you so much for joining us. A key conversation this week is just how strong your team has been to start this season. You guys ended obviously in a strong position last year, finishing second in points. Come back strong this year. Just maybe give us a little bit of insight into um, what's making you guys click on all cylinders right now. Yeah, I think I think it starts with this car. I can't overlook what this new car, not so new anymore, has uh, has done for the series and and for our team in particular. You know, we we've been able to build off the foundation. Um, that was uh, CGR and, and grow it into what we are now, and it's 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 wild. Um, and then rolling into this year, I feel like uh, we didn't we're not resting on what we accomplished last year. This nothing is guaranteed in this sport and in life. So um, nothing more clear than uh, 235 feet painted in front of a in front of track house where Justin wanted to remind us daily um, how close we were. So we're working all of us um, in our respective jobs to close that 235 feet to zero. All right, we're now gonna go to questions for Ross. If you have a question, we'll get a mic to you. We're gonna start up front with Kelly. Kelly .com. Ross, Connor Daly said this week that you apparently have, have a con had had a conversation with him about being interested in open wheel and IndyCar. Or is that was that a serious conversation? Would it be the Indy 500? Can you share your side of that? Yeah, it, it was definitely a serious conversation. Um, it's it's just um, we our our Cup simulator is right next to the Chevy IndyCar simulator, so we I pass those guys weekly now, and um, just I just had some genuine questions. Um, I, I wouldn't even know where to start, you know, and I didn't know what to ask him. And so um, he gave me a lot of advice. Some definitely probably turned me away from it, uh, but some was like, I think that's attainable one day, uh, but I'm focused on cup racing. So if something ever came about where I could just explore other racing, if it's uh, sports cars, other racetracks, other, other ways of racing cars uh, with other kind of, Ways every series is different, and every driver in those series has came up a different way. So I just want to be exposed to. You know, I wish I could go race. You know, I could have raced 15 years ago in like another country, and just w could have gotten to experience that. Um, and I see some kids getting to do that now, and and they come up through mainly the open wheel ladder. Us circle track racers, Saturday night short track, we're pretty in the same box, all of us. So I, I want to get outside of my comfort zone and get outside of the box. So not in the immediate future, but maybe one day. But Justin Marks and Trackhouse, you never know. <laughs> but I would be open for it. But uh, no, no plans. No, uh, I just had genuine, just so like gen generous, genuine questions. Um, so what was it that he said that uh, might have turned you off to it? That you said that uh, some of the things he said. It's the business side. <laughs> to kind of follow up on that, Justin hasn't discounted not going into IndyCar at some point, and you know that would be an easy transition. Other than, you know, Kyle and Kyle trying to find Chevy rides in Indy. I mean, you could have something in house and do that. If he did that, would that be the easiest path for you? I don't know what the easiest path is, and there's been no talks. Or th this is by far the longest conversation right here today that I've ever had about it. Um, so I just I just want to race. So um, if I can do it under the track house banner and various things and Justin and I can go we just have a love for racing so if we can both go and enjoy it I mean you see him off running Trans Am races and, and is one electrical issue away from another race win last week so um, we just share that that love for driving cars to the limit and I don't care if it has fenders no fenders if it has ABS or drum brakes I, I, I mean I want to go race my the dirt track 30 miles from from where I grew up that I never got to race at right I, I want to go run there so I just I just want to race so if I can I feel like right now I can put myself in more opportunities than I've ever been able to to race They're different than last night in the truck race some Xfinity races here and there um, my my goal is cup racing and my goal is circle track NASCAR racing but exploring the the horizons of other stuff I'm never it's just a it's just an inner desire I have, and I just love 
love racing, so I love the art of it. A year ago, you and I had this discussion last week at Auto Club. You were coming off to the, you know, Daytona and Auto Club were just brutal to you to start last season. Then you went and had lunch with, with uh, Justin, and you came back and just started ripping off top fives and tens. What was that lunch left and like, and, and what was the message he left you with? It was not the most pleasant lunch, I'll be honest. Um, I did text him this week on Tuesday and said I was happy that we were not having our second annual post-auto club lunch. Um, I went and ate there by myself just to do it, just for the the reminder that like it, it could be that again. It could be not as good as we've got it right now and to enjoy the moment. Um, but the circumstances around eating on the Tuesday after auto club one year apart was, I mean, just a total 180. So he did a lot of talking last year. I did a lot of listening, um, and I didn't have a lot of answers for him then, but we went back to work and, and started, you know, getting the ship righted. So um, I was really happy this year when I sat there alone and just got to enjoy my lunch and then go back to work at the shop. Uh, it's called Tacos for Life. It's right there by the shop, so it's just a easy spot to, to eat. All right, Gluck. Um, what what about this track in particular seems to suit you so well? I mean, you had a pair of top threes here last year. I mean, you got that big Xfinity win um, to really set off a lot of things in your event or events in your career. What why why this track? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't. I I feel like uh, there's other tracks that I. Um, understand more and there's other tracks that I've had faster race cars at but for some reason you know there have been some really high bright moments here um, but you know I, I look at it like every other track I study it like every other track and I studied it harder this week than than in leading into this race than you know than I ever have before because I have more tools at my disposal now than I ever have so um, I, I, I don't have answers I really don't know why I doesn't feel any different when I'm on track you know uh, there's not like a magic feeling I have or I know what I need in my race car whatever data you're looking at whether it's film or telemetry type stuff um, oh gosh I mean I don't do a lot of anything else I it's usually my, my weeks are filled with they're they're built out starting from the Sunday Cup race back, so the end of my week is Sunday, at the start of the Cup race, and then immediately following the race starts the next week as soon as I get out of the car, and it's all built on being ready for the next start of the next Cup race. So um, a lot of driving, you know, the kind of the Mooresville to Concord corridor for me back and forth. Um, and in the surrounding area is the bulk of my time. And then in the middle, I fit in calls for like the, our, my, the business side of my life where um, that's where all my hands-free calls are driving back and forth up Highway 3 is the other side of not, not actually driving the car. Um, and then when I get to wherever I'm going, it's like, okay, phone calls are off. A lot of time I just leave my phone in the car because mentally it's hard to... I mean, I, we have to virtually, you know, drive these tracks on simulators. Well, if your mind is on something else, you're not going to be applying yourself. When you're in the car in practice, for me, I can't think of anything else except driving the race car because if I crash, it's going to hurt. Simulators don't hurt. So it's very easy to be distracted for me. It's very easy to be driving down the backstretch this week in the sim and think about something else. So I just put my mind away to everything else and totally focus on this so the bigger picture the bigger picture of your question though I don't I don't know the hours um, never like really kept track but I mean I have to I have to carve out time away from like prep um, I just I don't have a lot else truly going on um, this is it for me right now Thank you. all right we'll wrap with Justin go ahead Justin Schuler kicking the tires. Just to kind of take a rabbit trail off of that question, um, high winds this weekend. So does the simulator prep you for that at all, or do you just show up to a track and have to deal with high winds, and how do you adjust to that? 
Yeah, no, no wind in the in the sim. Um, I'm, I don't. I, we're not even. I'm not even allowed to turn the the driver comfort fan on in there if I get too hot. So I have to sweat it out if if it's hot. But um, nope. Um, yeah, I mean we we adjust like you can adjust how fast you go and and how much grip the track has, uh, but doesn't account for for wind. So that's. Uh, that's where the cool part comes in. That's where race car drivers get to come and put these race cars to the limit. And uh, you catch a bad wind gust. I mean, I've, I, you know, more dirty air, but like wind crashes race cars. And it can be from dirty air of other cars a lot of times. But if it's as strong as they're talking about, if it's going to get that bad, it doesn't feel to me that bad right now. But if it gets that bad, then uh, we'll feel it inside the cars. All right, Ross, thanks so much for spending some time with us. Best of luck um, this weekend. Thanks, Amanda. All right, well, now I'll be joined by our defending race winner, Alex.